What's up, y'all? Kevin Kuhn here from Athlete Factors. This is the Athlete Factors podcast. I'm here with a new friend. Hi, guys. Ilya. Is that something? Is that Ilya? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Good pronunciation. Awesome. So, Ilya, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're halfway around the world right now. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I live in Italy uh, in a little city called Pordenone, uh, which is uh, like 1.5 hours from Venice up north, uh, just below the mountains. And it's a little town, and I grew up uh, all my life here, basically, uh, until in 2016, I started uh, my, uh, my bachelor in exercise science in Ferrara, which is a city near Bologna, if you are familiar, uh, which is a way bigger town in Italy, and it's very famous for, uh, like, mainly some, some pasta dishes, uh, but, um, uh, yeah, we're going into already already into culinary stuff, which is not the the point of of the podcast. But um, <laughs> yeah, I basically grew up there and um, went into Ferrara for about uh, two years before uh, interrupting my uh, university degree, just because I wanted to have some hands-on experience, and I was feeling that uh, the bachelor wasn't giving me enough. Uh, yeah, hands-on experience and experience with, with clients and with personal training, which, uh, which was basically what I was passionate about uh, mm-hmm. at that time and still, still, am, still I am. And then I, the plan is now to finish and turn back to Ferrara uh, to, to complete my, my, my bachelor, taking the minor in exercise physiology, uh, which is the plan for the next uh, two, two or two, three years, depending if I'm going to, uh, to work. And so uh, all this time frame is going to be lengthened a little, a little, or even, yeah, that's, that's it basically. Gotcha. So let's give everybody a little bit of background about how we got connected. So um, I finished up my podcast with my former professor, Dr. Willoughby, and posted that up. And not too long after that, I get this notification on Instagram that somebody tagged me and I'm like, I don't know who this is. And so I just kind of reached out to you and just said, Hey, thanks for, you know, for sharing that episode. And so that kind of started the conversation. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now and why, uh, how or why you think we got kind of cross path. Well, um, yeah, it started uh, with me sharing the the podcast uh, because I I'm a huge listener to huge listener to various podcasts, and I recently uh, concluded my one year internship under the wings of Iraqi Nutrition and under the wings of Juma Iraqi, which I uh, can easily consider my mentor and at this point friend. And it started like like that, and. Um, I was always very passionate about the, the field of sports nutrition and Darren Willoughby is probably one of my uh, top, uh, top icons in, in this field. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, every time I get the, the chance to listen to him or other, other professionals like, uh, let's say, um, well, Manuel Hanselmas, for instance, which is uh, mm-hmm. the main reason on why me and and Zuma connected uh, at the beginning. Um, I always uh, catch it and always uh, try and uh, and capture uh, whatever uh, these uh, these guys can can teach me further. And even w- when it's uh, topics that I already uh, maybe know, or just when it's like topics that are uh, a little more more basic, there is always something to learn and always something that I can improve on, even and at explaining myself uh, because. Uh, one of the biggest challenges challenges is not to to report PubMed studies, is to read them and explain them well. I think mm-hmm. so. That's one of my biggest uh, um, pet peeves, let's say, <laughs> let's say uh, that I'm I'm facing, and also that I'm trying to do even on my Instagram profile and on Iraqi Nutrition profile with the the creation of infographics, etc. So, gotcha. yeah, gotcha. So yeah, when I when I when you and I were talking, I was kind of asking about, you know, what is it that you're doing? And that's one of the things that you mentioned was uh, interning with Iraqi Nutrition. And I was instantly like, oh, wow, okay, this guy, 
uh, this guy's serious. He's not just, you know, sharing stuff to share stuff. Um, so that was really impressive, uh, I thought, anyway. So tell us a little bit about how you got that internship and um, your experiences with that and what your responsibilities have been during that length of time and things yeah. like that. Okay. Um, well, uh, it started with me researching for for podcast was a surprise and I was studying to uh, for my uh, second PT certification which at that time was the Hanselman's PT course uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, I mean which is now called Hanselman's PT course but at that time uh, it was called uh, the Bayesian personal training course and it was a uh, uh, it is still is a science-based based guy uh, guide to uh, to become a personal trainer Mm -hmm. Basically, and how to handle clients, how to become, how to quote studies, how to interpret research, and how to become uh, a good science-based professional. And and I was looking up into uh, Menno Hanselman's view, and so I looked up on on YouTube if I could find any any podcast that could help me, and I found Drew Myraki's podcast, uh, which was Iraqi Nutrition Podcast, mm -hmm. and I immediately listened to the interview, and I was impressed with. Uh, uh, Juma's capabilities of, you know, of speech, of asking the, the good questions. So I popped him an email and asked, uh, you know, further explanations. And, and I basically tried to connect like I did with you. And uh, yeah, it started basically from there. And then every single episode of the, of the, of the podcast that was coming out, I was always uh, spamming Juma with emails or messages and stuff like that and making him like uh, uh, you know, uh, making him say, who the hell is this guy? And so uh, it happened quite a few times. And, um, and then in March 2018, I asked him for, for coaching, if he, he could help me for my own nutrition and, and training optimization. Mm -hmm. And he was, very, um, he was very thorough in explaining me what to do, how to handle myself, and because the main goal for me was becoming independent and how to become uh, an even how to have um, an objective view on my on my own stuff mm -hmm. without you know falling into the new trends like uh, for instance the new snatch grip RDL which everyone seems to be doing mm -hmm. and and you know how to how to avoid all this kind of stuff and even in nutrition how to uh, to become less uh, uh, you know uh, Wishy-washy or... Yeah, less yeah, yeah. wishy-washy and more responsible because I am mm -hmm. very guilty of doing plenty of program hopping in the past, like, you know, uh, doing a mesocycle for four to eight weeks and then going, oh, well, uh, let's throw away all the all the progress with my pose squats and now let's do front squats for uh, six, to eight, six to eight weeks until I become bored. Uh, and now I'm completely the opposite. And now I do, like, uh, I'm doing pose squats since uh, January, basically. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been quite a while, and I'm I'm achieving the the best progress of my life because I'm sticking to the, this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm switching away a little. So um, it started then uh, this uh, journey of uh, Iraqi nutrition uh, started with me asking in probably it was June or or July 2018, and I asked Juma for an internship and for an opportunity to do something for him because I wanted, uh, you know, to give away something to this man who was very kind to me and, you know, explaining me all this kind of stuff. And I felt mm -hmm. like I I gave him something uh, from all the podcast episodes that I, you know, took notes from and all this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, he, he mentioned that he yeah, he was going to start um, wrecking nutrition and all the all the company bringing in bringing in uh, more guys like Sergio Espinar, Hans uh, Hans Miltunem, and Kim Schwalde and other guys uh, to you know to um, achieve a good team of professionals who could mm -hmm. uh, who could uh, um, follow clients in their journeys around the world and that was basically the plan. Uh, so he he took me on and that's that's basically we discussed the, all these. Uh, all this stuff for a few weeks, and then it started in August, and I was under under contract uh, uh, in, in until September probably. So officially, I work for like I worked uh, for Iraqi Nutrition since the first of September uh, of 2018, and 
that's it basically that's uh, quite a long journey and yeah i, I mean the <laughs> so uh, it basically started with me asking uh, there is i'm I think that there is no shame sometimes in basically asking someone, even if they say no, because it happened already in the past. That oh. for I asked uh, for. Oh, you, you lost me f for a second. For a, for a split second there. Oh god! But you were saying well, uh, you you just you asked, right? You just yeah. you put yourself out there. Yeah. Yeah. You can just ask, and if the guy thinks that if your uh, um, if the work that you're applying for uh, can suit your capabilities, or even if you can improve at it, which was my main goal, become better as doing to do personal training and become better at you know sharing knowledge or you know uh, inter even interpreting knowledge because I was at a point where I thought that I could do stuff that uh, uh, you know I wished for, but apparently I wasn't good enough, and I thought that I could read every single PubMed study in the world because I knew how to how to read I don't know protein research, and I knew just a few kind of you know this gene uh, does that and this protein does that, but uh, mm -hmm. apparently it wasn't. Uh, so um, even you know going back to explaining how calories work and how caloric balance works, uh, even you know humbled m myself a lot. Um, and you know contributed contributed i think to um yeah to may, to make maybe assess my knowledge a little better and not become you know the the cocky guy who who quotes pubmed studies uh online which i still am uh, <laughs> uh but you know that's that's it basically <laughs> i hear you well that's pretty awesome so that's essentially the reason I wanted to bring you on was to to talk about how, um, you know, getting into this industry can be really difficult sometimes, especially if you're shy, right? So you have to be willing to ask people for help, to ask people to teach you. And so, um, yeah, essentially, I want this to be a very, very good tool or a useful tool for people who are interested in either getting into sport nutrition or who are uh, who want to get into personal training and just kind of show an example of if you're assertive, if you put yourself out there, if you study on your own and but then also seek out more information and network and make connections with people, then, you know, amazing things can happen. And, you know, an example of that is two people who've never met face to face are now having a conversation halfway across the world so that we can discuss sport nutrition and all kinds of cool stuff. So I just think that's amazing. I'm really pumped about it. It got me fired up. Just having the conversation with you, I was like, oh my gosh. If I had <laughs> if I had a source like this when I was, you know, just starting college or even before college. This would have answered a lot of questions that I had, you know, um, uh, the not so traditional way, let's say. Like you, you weren't just going through the traditional university program. You saw that there were these gaps that you were like, you know what, it's not hands on enough. I need to do that. And then that led you down the path to where you were like, you know what? I need to learn more about this area. So then you started asking questions there. And um, yeah. I think it's so easy to get caught into the um, the stream, if you will, of, oh, well, just you start in this path and then you just follow that path. Well, to get to where you want to end up, it's probably not going to be a straight path. You're probably going to have to weave around and, and, you know, make it your own. So I think that's really awesome. Um, so, yeah, man, keep up the good work. Keep learning. Keep asking people. Um, keep sharing podcasts. And, uh, yeah, that's a really good example for really for everybody, whether you're just starting out or whether you're 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the industry. You can't, you can't know enough. You always got to continue learning. So I think that's, you know, yeah. that's really good. It's really good stuff. You actually mentioned a very good uh, topic to bring on, which is um, the opportunity to learn. Because I think that when, um, I mean, saying at your times sounds very 
very bad. But you know, uh, for for people in their forties at this point, uh, I mean, twenty years ago there was no internet. Our internet was just starting out, and you know, uh, having ways to learn this kind of stuff was way harder. And besides textbooks and getting a PhD, there was no other way to to become very competent in this field. I think, and while now you can actually get access to plenty of podcasts. You can actually get access mm-hmm. to research reviews, uh, all these kind of, of mm-hmm. tools that are, are a new door that unlocks uh, an opportunity to know more and, and become better at what you do. Uh, so uh, I often get asked by, by my peers, how did I get good at uh, speaking English or maybe like reading English and doing uh, do my job, and the answer is is very simple. I was interested in in doing this kind of stuff. So uh, um, I think that uh, once you realize that uh, you can get access to whatever you want and whatever field you like, uh, the language at this point doesn't become a barrier. Or even like uh, internet at this point is no longer a barrier. You can get access to plenty of stuff whenever you are. So, yeah, uh, yeah, anywhere. Yeah, even on your phone. Like it's, there's yeah. no excuses now. Like if you're not learning, it's like, man, what's wrong? Like it's too easy to <laughs> learn new stuff now. There's no no excuses. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your role uh, currently at Iraqi Nutrition, like generating content. What is it specifically that you do there now? Uh, well, uh, at this time, the internship actually ended. Uh, it ended on the 1st of September 2019, so it lasted one year. Um, I actually got renewed for working again for Yaki Nutrition, but at this point, nice. we're handling some internal difficulties. So my uh, my contract and my new opportunity to work with them uh, actually has uh, shifted uh, until maybe late 2019 or even the start of 2020. So uh, you can say that I'm unemployed for a few months, but it will be just uh, a temporary condition. Um, mm-hmm. Then I'm going to start working again for them. And my main job uh, back then, so in the, la- in, the, in, the la- in, the, in the last year, was to generate content and create infographics. Mm-hmm. And to do this, I started with, with Canva, which is a, a open access software who, who, uh, that anyone can, can go to you know, and learn. It's very easy. And um, the main... Um, challenge was to you know simplify everything uh without uh posting like chemistry schemes or other weird stuff was you know making things simple and just readable because most people even on instagram don't don't read captions which is which is a, mm-hmm. a shame and if you if you do so don't do it <laughs> but uh, um <laughs> most people uh just you know um stare at the image for a few seconds, see if they catch it, and then, you know, they they can share it or, you know, read further the, the article or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you need to create something that, you know, catch catches your eyes and it's still evidence-based and complete in its own. Uh, so this was my main my my main job, you can say. And mm-hmm. then of course learning all the all the coaching process. So how to handle a client, how to program, uh, all this kind of stuff, which is uh, the core of online coaching, which is which I'm not going into because it's uh, you know uh, it's everywhere, but you know that's basically online coaching. Uh, so that's it. Gotcha. So how long does it take to produce a uh, a sample picture or a sample infographic? Well, uh, when I used Canva, it took very very little. Uh, it took maybe like uh, two to four hours, depending on the topic. And the main uh, challenge was actually to create the article. Um, so mm. for that, it could, it could take anywhere between one to even th- three hours at uh, the beginning. And then for a more complicated topic, when further research is needed, where, uh, you know, the, the research phase actually maybe took on the, the biggest chunk of time. And mm. that could take between uh, um, two to four hours per article. So in total, we're looking at maybe like averaging eight to 10 hours for every single, uh, for every single post. Um, mm-hmm. That's about it. Gotcha. Because you're you're not just reading some some other you, people's blog posts. You're actually reading peer-reviewed, published research, and then extracting the main points, putting that into you know a practical 
um, yeah, well, way we of actually delivering quoted, it. We Go actually ahead, quoted uh, some some uh, some other uh, some other people's stuff like Arikamsis Pyramid, uh, which were uh, my uh, first uh, step into the, nutri the sports nutrition industry uh, mm -hmm. back in 2015, I think, uh, or 2014, even even back then. Yeah, um, and then we, we actually reported even the Manohensoman PT course for for some stuff uh, like all the micronutrient uh, series was actually uh, a little taken from Menohensomon's PT course, especially all the studies and all the references, which I forgot to 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 mention. And then I got reported by Menno himself. Um, and then <laughs> basically it caused uh, 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 <laughs> an explosion in the history, in the, in the industry, like, oh my God, these guys are reporting the same studies that, that Menno report. Yeah, I know because I forgot to mention them. And I, at that time, uh, at I thought it was something something cool to do, but um, apparently even if someone is reporting something, you have to quote where you get that from. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that I, I learned th through this process, that you always need to be meticulous whenever you're, you're quoting someone or you're just you know reporting the same studies that they're doing or stuff like that can get you in trouble. And I got in trouble for that. <laughs> but, uh, it, it ended up uh, good eventually. Uh, it ended up like uh, uh, like one week afterwards, everyone forgot about that and life moved on. So it's yeah. Well, yeah but at that time it was such a a big deal because Mano and Thomas actually reported that. So uh, yeah, it was <laughs> it was big. Uh, yeah, that's a little whoops. Yeah, but everybody yeah. makes mistakes. <laughs> So that's good. It's a good learning experience for you. You know, sometimes learning the hard way means you only have to learn it once. So that's yeah. good. That's a good thing. So, um, so tell us a little bit about your, your, uh, personal background. Do you play any sports growing up or, uh, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Well, um, my, my career in, in team sports ended very, very bad, meaning that I, I played basketball for about uh, 10 years of my life. Uh, I grew up playing basketball and having a ball uh, bouncing while I was eating even. Um, so, um, and then ended up like with me losing to a, uh, a regional, um, uh, losing the opportunity to enter a regional team uh, in my town. Uh, and in my region, of course, and at, at that time I got uh, it got bad, meaning that I completely avoided basketball for one year, and I moved mm -hmm. on to on to swimming, and I I actually did swimming for quite a few a few years back then, and when I when my swimming teacher uh, taught me that uh, I needed more mass on my frame to be more competitive, and she actually uh, told me to start going. To the gym, uh, it ended up with uh, uh, me not going back to swimming uh, because uh, <laughs> I I felt in love with the gym and all this bodybuilding world and um, that I, I wanted. Every, yeah, never went back to swimming, <laughs> even if I w was offered the opportunity to compete in a regional level again. And uh, but you know, it just uh, didn't work. Uh, so I went That's from sports to. A single single man sport, and then I went to bodybuilding, which is the ultimate egocentric sport in the world. Uh, <laughs> but at the end, works for me. I I love it, and I'm, what I'm doing right now is basically that. Uh, so this is my uh, sports background, and uh, it went well with with basketball. I wasn't uh, a very good player, but I was decent. And even swimming, I wasn't uh, the last, but I was never. The first either uh, so it went good even then but i was never a very good guy playing sports um especially team sports i was quite a you know uh the guy who never passes the ball at, at <laughs> and uh, but then eventually when i got at the regional level and you know passing the ball and working well with your teammates was the main uh, um you know uh one of the main functions actually because you can't win a game just by playing by yourself like when you're 14 that you know uh, the only guy that knows how to how to play maybe can get the chance of you know uh, having the ball more time, but yeah. uh, which I wasn't. But anyway, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm drifting away here. Um, it ended up uh, with me just you know lifting weights and learning.
by mistakes even there. And that's about it. I got the luck of being followed by a, a dietitian since, since the start. So I never got into bodybuilding, you know, eat, uh, train, sleep, uh, and all this kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, even from when my uh, swimming teacher uh, told me to uh, go to uh, lift some, some weights, I got immediately followed by uh, a dietitian who, who provided me a nutrition protocol. And I got immediately into, you know, tracking uh, my nutrition and all this kind of stuff. So it basically went uh, like a blink of an eye with me tracking micronutrients and, and discovering if it fits your macros the, the, the year afterwards. So it went from chicken rice and, and broccoli from eating to eating, uh, you know, donuts and or sweets uh, in, in <laughs> training and kind of stuff, this kind of stuff. Um, nice. Now I am, uh, if you follow me through my Instagram stories, you can see that I have, I, I actually got back to a, uh, in a, in a bro eating way of, of doing things. Uh, so I, 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 I like to eat most the same stuff every, every single day, uh, which mm -hmm. eventually worked up, worked for me a little better, uh, with the more responsibility that I have now compared to when I was in high school, uh, which, you know, sure. tracking macros was even fun. And uh, now it, it, it became a stress after doing it for so many, so many years. So, uh, mm -hmm. that's it. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, yeah, I, uh, I've seen some of the food that you post. You always make the, whatever you put in the bowl, you're putting like fruit in the bowl. It's all lined up. It looks so pretty. Yeah. That's <laughs> obsessive compulsive disorder right there. <laughs> if you're going to post it online, it's got to look good. So I get it, man. So, um, so what, what do you have planned for your future? Where do you see yourself in like five to 10 years? What are you doing? Things like that. Um, well, um, finish up my my bachelor is the is the first thing, and get my my minor in physiology and become more competent in this field, and mm -hmm. potentially con consider a, a master's degree in in nutrition. Or uh, if I get uh, if I get re rewarded by my my path, potentially do a PhD in sports nutrition which would be the ultimate dream probably and which in italy is very hard to get because uh we don't get enough phds and the funding for especially nutrition research is not very high uh, but that would be a very cool dream and eventually considering the opportunity of doing this abroad like in england or you or you know the us would be even cooler uh so yeah. That's it. That's the the my main plan regarding the academic field, and then mm -hmm. in regarding sports, uh, I'd love to lift weights um, and you know keep doing bodybuilding, which is what I love, and eventually um, maybe compete and hop on a stage before I turn 30. So mm -hmm. I still have plenty of years ahead, uh, but you know I wanted to do this uh, not as a junior, but not even as an, an advanced com an advanced competitor. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want start uh, not early but not even uh too late even if in, even if in bodybuilding it's never too late um but um yeah, yeah uh, so that's the plan and <laughs> what's your plan <laughs> i'm losing you for a second that's our thanks again okay we're back uh, awesome yeah yeah, it, you're right. It's never too late. Even Dr. Willoughby still comes, still competes. So it's never too late. Um, in five to ten years, what am I going to be doing? Hopefully, still this podcast. So and hopefully, you'll have been back on it a few times. Um, I one thousand. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, have a little bit bigger facility. Hopefully, this will continue to grow. Um, I'd like to write a couple more books and uh, yeah, I, I love my job. I love doing this. This is, it's, I don't always like waking up, you know, at 4.30 in the morning, but um, most of the time that's really not a big deal. I just roll out of bed and I, I do my thing. And the nice thing is I, you know, I get to nap, which I enjoy. Um, so yeah, working with all kinds of athletes, um, especially kids, that's, that's my jam. I love that. So hopefully I'll still be doing that. And, uh, 
yeah, hopefully Athlete Factors will be like, you know, maybe I'll have a few locations at, at that point. I don't know yet, but um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my plans for the future. So that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yeah. you already have plenty of experience. I mean, I mean, uh, I saw your Instagram profile and your bio, and I was deeply impressed with how many stuff you've done and how many mm -hmm. degrees you have actually. Uh, so yeah, well, thank you. Props for you, man. Yeah, at at some point, I'd like to go back to get my PhD as well. Um, so, I timing wise, right now, uh, I'm not sure when that will be, but that's that's in the cards. I've always wanted to do that, but just uh, yeah, down the road for sure. Um, but yeah, that would be fun. It's I I don't think people realize how hard it is and how if you don't really really want it then it's probably not something you should dive into so but it's totally worth it everybody i know who's pursued that and who's got their phd is like it's the hardest thing i've ever done and i don't want to do it again but i'm really glad i did it yeah <laughs> so so speaking of academia what are what are some things that you're learning right now well, um, I still have to start again because the um, university starts in about uh, three weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm learning now. I'm doing the ISSN SNS sport certification, which is a, a good certification in sport nutrition. Uh, well, saying good is very is very cocky, but again, uh, it's I think it's very recognized in the industry, and I wanted yeah. to do um, this certification because. Um, yeah, hopefully it could give me more and learning even again from from the basics is always good and even learning more about calories and learning all the studies uh, which are requested for the exam like you need to know how to quote studies and where uh, where they say for instance that multivitamins for uh, X population are not good and whether you know uh, for athletes of this kind uh, these supplements might work in this situations is, uh, is very good and uh, actually diving even more into research which was my main goal uh, with this certification is uh, what's examined on the test so uh, I'm doing this at the moment which is um, which is my main book I have it here I this book right right there um, it's I'm reading basically this and I'm doing this in my free time uh, while I still work as a personal trainer as a uh, in a gym right right here and mm -hmm. yeah that's about it nice yeah i have the same book but it's actually holding up my computer right now so <laughs> <laughs> good well hopefully mine will up end up uh, in the library back here <laughs> yes. as soon as i finish but it's always good even the an sca book that i i studied in for for the exam Personal sometimes training. i actually yeah, sometimes I get back to it uh, because I, I find maybe some concepts explained very well that I can explain again to my clients or something like that that is always useful. Or maybe some some guidelines that I forgot. Uh, it's always nice to have them and on paper you can go back at your notes and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, after my maybe freshman or sophomore year in college, my first two years, I was like okay with when I had finished a book, either selling it back to the library or selling it to another student. And then after that, I was like, you know what? If I learn something from this class, I probably want to hold on to the book, the textbook or whatever, because I'll probably need to use it again in the future. So um, yeah, I still have my NSCA book from, from studying for the CSCS. And uh, I still crack it open every once in a while just to look at, you know, hormonal effects to resistance training versus hormonal effects to, you know, whatever was compiled by people in the industry who take the research pretty seriously and who are in fact doing that research. So, um, yeah, you got a, you got a pretty solid, uh, library behind you. So what kind of, uh, what kind of books do you like to read when you're not reading stuff related to exercise science or sport nutrition? Uh, oh, well, um, 
mainly mainly fiction, I'd say. Um, but I'm not a, a huge reader. I mainly read um, science topics or you know nutrition and this kind of stuff. I mainly read for for pleasure just before bed and to fall asleep. So it and it always ends up with me like reading. Uh, 10 to 20 pages and then falling asleep so um, <laughs> uh, at the moment i'm i'm reading uh 22 11 63 uh by stephen king uh mm. which is i think yeah i think this other yeah it's 63 i'm reading yeah uh it's basically um yeah it's a book by i actually saw the the tv series uh i think two years ago uh with the one with james franco and mm. then i I discovered that it, it came from a book by Stephen King, which I'm a huge fan of. And mm. then I started, the, I bought the, the book back in January, but I started, I actually started it in maybe June or July of, of this year. And now that's what I'm reading. So I yes. like a lot psychology books, mainly mm. like Daniel Kahneman, if you know, mm -hmm. if you know the guy and mainly psychology, but also fiction. And that's what I mostly read for for pleasure. Uh, I liked a lot uh, Sapowski book, if you like them, if you know them, uh, like awesome. Why Zebras uh, Don't Get Ulcers. It's oh, my yeah, favorite yeah. book from, yeah, yeah, that one, for instance. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I think it's it's uh, uh, it's most known book, probably, and like even Human Biology by Sapowski, uh, it's very good. Um, yeah, not light reading here, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but, That's okay. <laughs> That's all right, yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, Stephen King is a good read then. And um, even like uh, reading it uh, at the beginning of the year uh, from from the because I never read it when I was a child apparently, and I missed that you know cracking the walnut. Uh, so <laughs> apparently, all these kids that read it as as a child ended up like with uh, uh, nightmares about uh, you know about clowns and all these kind of uh, figures and with horror uh, dreams and. I didn't. I never yeah. got it until I, I started reading the book, and now I, I get it. I got <laughs> bad dreams about clowns too. Uh, even now at uh, the uh, at, at at 23, so it's uh, yeah, that's weird. But uh. shoot, man, I don't like clowns, and I did not read that. But I remember as a little kid watching previews of the original It movie, yeah. and I was like, no, I don't. I don't want to watch that. I don't want to read it. No, thank you. It's so scary to me. So I s steered clear from that. And uh, <laughs> man, so a couple of years ago, um, people dressed up like clowns and would like roam like at night, like weird times here in the U.S. It was really strange. Uh, so I don't know what the deal is with clowns, but I know there's there's another one coming out. It too, right? So yeah. Have fun with that. I will not be watching it. <laughs> I will. I I will have for sure some some friend that drags me to the movie theater get... with him or her, and yeah, we'll do. I will watch it too. Uh, the the first it. supper. Yeah. <laughs> always ends up like that. I'm not a huge a movie theater fan. I always, you know, stream movies and or maybe like buy movies online to watch. Um, uh, just because I like the. The comfortness, the comfortable, uh, you know, uh, of doing something from your home, but uh, it, it's good to go out sometimes and not to be like uh, anti-humans like I am, uh, some in most cases. But you know, are you are you, do you consider yourself an introvert? Well, um, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I'd say that I'm an introvert, but I also like a lot my my job as a personal trainer, so. Uh, when I'm by myself, I don't like to go out sometimes because I already had plenty of uh, human stuff during the day. Uh, so yeah. I always, uh, when I go out with my friends, it always ends up like with me, uh, like uh, with my brain fried about uh, listening too much and speaking too much during mm -hmm. the, the day to other people that uh, I'm not in the, in the mood for that in, in most cases, but I still have to, you know, to cultivate my uh, my friendships and, and stuff like that sometimes. So, do you find the same working with for sure with clients? It's something that a lot of people, yeah. Like when I when I was in college, I thought I was very much an extrovert.
because I always wanted to uh, hang out with my friends, go, you know, go study with a group of people. Um, I was, I ran cross country and track, so I was always on a team. Um, but then when I started working, I quickly realized like during the day, all that interaction with all of my clients, like you, you're really like my battery was getting drained. And so I'd get to the end of the day and in order for me to recharge it, I wanted to be alone that yeah. or not necessarily alone, but I didn't want to do things very, uh, in a, in a very crowded social, um, interactive sort of situation. I, I didn't mind being with other people, but I kind of wanted it to be, uh, like me basically not talking. So <laughs> just to like <laughs> yeah. rest, you be a zombie and just, you know, standing there on the chair yeah, without, uh, exactly. without doing nothing. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's yeah. the same. I, I find that, you know, it really drains you to work with people, but it's also very fulfilling. Um, so that's yeah. why I love it. Uh, but you know, it's, it's draining. You have such, maybe your, your body, uh, can tell you that you can stand up more and, you know, demonstrate one more exercise and do one more, one more thing. But, your mind is like exploding and asking for, for help and, you know, to being alone and stuff like yeah. that. So yeah, always find the same for, even when I was, um, I worked at a commercial gym for about six hours every single day, uh, mm -hmm. almost, uh, back from, it started in October and it ended this, uh, June at, at this year. And yeah, I always came back home at night with just my mother talking to me about, you know, what I wanted to, to do for the night, what I, I wanted, you know, for, to do for the next day. And it always ended up for, with me, like, uh, not being uh, very, uh, talkative and very approachable. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> even, even with friends, I used to, you know, respond the, the day afterwards to, to messages, uh, even though I would have loved to maybe go out that night, but I was such, such so much drained that I couldn't, uh, do it. So. Yeah. And what's, what's interesting is, um, I, I have to spend time by myself so that I can be as present as possible while I'm here at the office when I'm working, like sorry, Kevin, I lost you again. I want to be as, okay, no worries. Just okay, I lost you your again. Okay, I lost you for like 10 seconds and I lost your observation about uh, spending time by yourself in order to uh, gotcha. do with clients. Gotcha. Yeah, so um, in order for me to be as effective as possible, as 100% uh, emotionally there as possible, I've got to spend time by myself, either reading or just watching TV, just hanging out with my dog. Uh, laying on the couch and just um, kind of recharging my own battery so that uh, when I do come in, it's not, it's not that I hate being around people. Like that's what a lot of people don't necessarily understand about being an introvert. And when I thought I was an extrovert, I was like, I didn't understand the differences. Um, it's not that I don't want to be around people. I do. But in order for me to recharge my battery, I have to be, I have to spend some quality time by myself. So where I'm, I'm not necessarily interacting so that I can be very effective, you know, interacting with people later. So, cause that's part of being a strength coach or a personal trainer or a sport performance coach, whatever the case may be. Part of that is being, uh, people don't like this necessarily when I say it, but you have to entertain the client. You have to get them to not necessarily think about all the bad stuff that might be happening in their life and in that in that moment you know like maybe they had a really stressful day at work they don't want to relive all of that so you've got to be able to like break them out of whatever funk they're in so that you can have a, an effective training session and so you've got to be uh, aware of those things you can't be thinking about what's going on you know, in your head, in your life, because you've got to invest in them in that moment. And if you're doing that for, like you said, six hours, there's times where, 
yeah, six hours in a row, that's what I've got to do. Um, that's psychologically draining. So if you're not finding out what, whatever it is that you have to do to recharge your battery, then you're probably going to get burned out. So um, knowing that about myself now, it's like, okay, that's fine. I, I know how to do this. I know what I need to do to recharge my battery, to make myself effective and efficient and competent. Um, but yeah, early on, I didn't know. I kind of had to figure it out as I went, which sometimes was stressful. But ultimately, it's it's that's life. You live as you, or you learn as you live, and that's uh, you know that's a good way to do things. So yeah, but yeah. <laughs> So oh, that was that was very deep, man. I actually had a, a similar conversation with my hairdresser like two days ago when I I got my hair, and yeah. he make it, he made me reflect that uh, when you are at the hairdresser, it's the most amount of time that you spend doing nothing and staring yourself at the mirror. And if you think so, it's very scary, man, because when you are in front of the mirror, yeah, maybe you are shaving, you're you're doing stuff, but it's never like a deep time to. To reflect and just to relax and look yourself in the mirror and mm. um, that was uh, very uh, actually uh, what what you said about um, you know having time to uh, to reflect and think about what makes you feel uh, comfortable and what makes you feel recharged and w- what makes you recharge your your batteries and yeah I just associated this uh, uh, observation of yours with uh, with this other observation by my hairdresser, uh, which was, yeah, very strange, actually. Uh, but, you know, um, just an, a flash fault there. <laughs> yeah, that's re- that's really interesting. I, w- I, uh, I cut my own hair, so I don't I don't have like a, a barber or anything like that hairdresser. So um, but that makes sense. Like I've been I've been to places where I, I get my hair cut or um, every once in a while, I like to get a straight razor shave, you know, like with yeah. a single blade, like, and usually when you're just sitting in the chair, you're just staring at the mirror. You're just, all you have, all you have time to do is think. And so that's a, that's a very interesting yeah. observation. Like you, you can spend some serious time evaluating. Yeah. Okay. How am I, I recharging? Yeah, and I think that this amount of time is the valuable time that you can spend how, on yourself, but it's very hard as a professional. Uh, so um, knowing that and knowing that you still have that time, but you, you have to make up for it, uh, it's a very good challenge. Uh, so <laughs> That's the truth. Shoot. So what's a, uh, what's a piece of information that you think is very important for everyone to hear? Or maybe some um, some advice you have, especially for somebody. Uh, let's say you're talking to yourself from five years ago. What would you? What advice would you give yourself? Well, um, oh well, I'd say learn English uh, very well. Um, I'd say that I uh, I started early with English, uh, playing cards. I don't know if you know the game called Magic: The Gathering. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I started playing that, and in in a place where if you didn't buy cards in English, you were uh, a dumbass basically. Uh, so uh, I started, and that was my first approach with English because I wasn't learning English in school. So the biggest, uh, my biggest advice would be to learn the language that you wanna be, uh, you wanna do research in, or you wanna just uh, hurt people out because if you know that. Uh, some guy from uh, Spain uh, does very cool information. The the challenge is not to get that guy translated. Well, if you can do it, but uh, the challenge is uh, you know learn that guy that guy's language and know mm-hmm. how you can uh, go directly to the source. Uh, so that that would be one of my biggest advices. And then the other would be, of course, to make mistakes uh, because uh, I. I've made plenty and I've only learned from them. Uh, so that would be the, the second and probably the third would be, uh, of course, making mistakes here uh, involves either me dropping out of, of uni and interrupting my, my, my bachelor to get some hands-on experience, uh, which was what I wanted. And 
But still, I would have never done anything of this if I never interrupted uni. And maybe at this point, yeah, I could have uh, a degree in my end, which is always cool. And I could have gone into a master's already. Uh, but um, I wouldn't have discovered that this was uh, truly my my passion at what I wanted to do. And I learned this only by mistake and by dropping out and uh, doing some hands-on work. Uh, so even if you feel that something might be a mistake at a time being, maybe it's not. Uh, so give it some time and let, let it settle and do it uh, for, long, for long enough and make sure that to correct that mistakes and turn it into a, a good point of yours and to a new turning path, uh, let's say. Um, so that's it basically. <laughs> that's amazing advice, I think. Um, especially like the world is getting smaller and smaller, but there's still the language barrier. So I think that's super important. I, I need to be better about learning other languages, that's for sure, just because like you said, you can you can probably get the research translated, but as far as interacting with other people, like that's you've got to be able to communicate. So, um, yeah, yeah. If you hadn't learned English, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So thank you, because yeah. I don't know any Italian. No, so thank you, man. <laughs> well, Italian, yeah. Well, you can go maybe like do some some of these with your hands. You can say. Pasta, spaghetti, and you're also done, man. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's hilarious. So, how can uh, how can people follow you? How can they reach out to ask you questions? Um, that sort of thing. What What are you at on social media? Well, I am most active on Instagram. At uh, my handle, it's Elia. Oliviero Barbon, and it's, uh, well, it's a very complicated name, and it's basically my name, uh, second name, and surname, but um, I'll make sure Kevin puts that <laughs> in the caption, uh, because okay. it's very hard to spell. <laughs> uh, my, uh, so, and then uh, you can actually reach out to me at my work email, uh, which is which is elia at iraqinutrition.com, and that's basically it. Um, I have these two, these two places. I also have Facebook, but I don't have it in my phone. I only have it in my, in my computer because I usually use it for my own private life and, and, and stuff. Uh, so I usually have Instagram and my working email, uh, which are, are the best places to find me. Uh, awesome. You can stalk me there and, and pop me viruses in the emails. No, no problem. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I have a feeling that... Uh, this is going to be very, very helpful for for people who are really interested in getting into the industry, but who don't know how to start. They don't know what step to take. And it's, um, I mean, I think you're a really good example of just being assertive, just putting yourself out there, asking questions, and then saying, hey, can I, can I learn from you? Can I work with you? And just taking that step figuring out how you can get some really good experience that's going to be able to allow you to better leverage what you're learning in uni now like because you have this hands-on experience you can see what you know what the university or the academic side um can be can really The ways that it can be to risk looking stupid. Okay. You don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. And if you're just starting, um, no one expects you to know everything. But if you if you show that you're willing to learn, like you'll you'll be amazed about you know how many people will reach a hand out and say, hey, I think I can teach you something, and I want the industry to be robust and competent. So if you're passionate about it, I'll I'll risk helping you out so i think um it's really admirable that you've done that and i hope more people follow suit and do the same thing especially you know kids in uni kids who are uh in college and who want to be part of this industry like reach out to people um because there's people who want to you know they want to see this industry flourish and do well and um we don't want these people on Instagram who are posting, you know, baloney and who are posting 
you know, stuff that's just not not legitimate and not scientifically sound and not um, research based. And so the more people that we can have like you who are spreading quality content, like the better. So thank you so much well, for taking the time man. to do this. I really Making appreciate it. I'm right here. <laughs> Thanks, sure. And uh, yeah, we'll get you on again in the future to, just to catch up, see how the rest of your university experience is going and see what else you're doing. And um, yeah, man. Awesome. I really appreciate oh, it. Love to you again. <laughs> oh, right at the end here. Right at the end. Oh, right that's bad. <laughs> no, that's all good. It's all good. You're so, your guest. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody go follow Ilya. Ask him any questions you have. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see y'all.